Hello and welcome. My name is Suli Richardson and I am the Financial Wellness Senior Educator at Desert Financial Credit Union. And today we are talking about organizing your financial records part two. So let me go ahead and share my screen so that you can see the presentation and we're going to get started. So this is a continuation to part one because there was a lot of information and we really did not want to um, overwhelm people with providing so much detail. So today we're gonna to talk about the nitty gritty of organizing your financial records to help you become more efficient and then share with you some very specific tips on some different areas. All right, so let's get started. And I'm gonna start with a video. It is super cute. It talks about what to keep, what to throw away. That could be very stressful for a lot of us. So let me go ahead and um, share this video with you. Jan, today you'll be playing Keep or Toss. We show you a personal document, and you tell us whether you should keep or toss it. You have five attempts. Three right wins the game. And our fabulous mystery prize. Good luck. Hi, Mom. First up, we have an ATM withdrawal slip. This scrap of paper, which was found crumpled at the bottom of a purse, showcases a checking account withdrawal of $40. Now, Jan, what do you say? Keep or toss? I'm going to say keep. Let's find out if she's right. Oh, Jen, I'm sorry. ATM slips don't have to be kept forever. Once the transaction is reflected in your account, you can say bye-bye to those pesky little papers. Oh, man. It's still early in the game. Next up, we have a monthly bank statement. Ooh. This bank statement is from last month and details a variety of regular expenses. Now, Jen, you've seen the bank statement. Keep or toss. I have a good feeling about this one. Keep. Keep, you got it. Bank statements should be kept for the current year and even longer if they include business expenses, major purchases, tax deductible expenses, or mortgage installments. You are just two points away from that sweet, sweet mystery prize. Next up, an assortment of blender-related print materials. This set includes a full-color instruction manual, original purchase receipt, and warranty contact information. I usually put that stuff straight into the garbage. Key or toss? Toss. Oh, no. You actually want to hold on to that manual and warranty information for all of your appliances and electronics for as long as you own them. Oh, shoot. You're still in this. Remember, you need two more to win. Next, we have a pay stub. This stylish pay stub from two years ago details the weekly pay given to Kevin, a part-time lasagna chef. Now, we want to know, keep or toss? I think pay stubs should be kept for at least one year, so I want to say keep, but this statement is two years old, which means Kevin has already checked it against his W-2 form from that year, so toss. Toss that pay stub. Toss! Yes! Jen is climbing her way back to the top. All that stands between you and that fabulous mystery prize is this last item. Let's do this. Here, we have a credit card statement, also two years old. Among the purchases are a dinner at a sushi restaurant, a taxi taken on a business trip, and a TV set. And now, for the win, Jen, we need to know, what will you do? Keep or toss? Oh, man. Let me think about this one. Your fate is in your hands. This statement is two years old, so it should be okay to toss it. Everyone is counting on you. But there's something about those specific purchases. The stakes have never been higher. It looks like a business expense, which means that it might have been a tax deduction. The tension is unbearable. And if it is tax related, you should hold on to it for seven years. And the TV. Come to think of it, this can't be good for my hypertension. 
that's a major purchase. So this statement could serve as proof of payment in a warranty claim. Keep! Jan, you said keep. Even though this credit card statement is two years old and could probably be accessed online. For the win and that sweet mystery prize. Let's find out. Is it keep? Keep! Yeah! You're a winner! Let's find out what you've been playing for. You are now the proud owner of a new car, but footprint-reducing solar-powered paper shredder. What? This eco-friendly self-cleaning shredder features a cross-cut shred style that provides added protection from identity thieves. Its slick design and smooth handling will have you shredding everything in sight. Keeper Toss takes no responsibility for user error in shredding documents that should be kept forever. That's another happy winner on Keep or Toss. We'll be right back after a quick word from our sponsor. Hey. So what do you think about that video? Interesting, right? Jen... I think that a lot of us probably could um, identify with Jen and all the decisions that she had made and kind of struggled with, you know, what to keep, what to toss, but it was a lot of good information. Lots of interesting tips. So in the last webinar, we talked about, you know, the advantages and the benefits of digitizing some of your documents as opposed to keeping everything in a hard paper copy. So today, um, these are some documents that you might want to consider to store online. Titles, deeds to property, lease and loan agreements, financial planning records, of course, tax returns, um, personal records like birth, adoption, citizenship, marriage, divorce, death certificates, all of these types of documents you might want to consider digitizing. So think about if there was an emergency and you had to get this document to someone or to an organization, a company in a hurry. By having it online, you can easily access and then email remotely. Look at health records. This would include, of course, your family members, but if you have pets, be sure to include your pet's records as well. Um, any academic records that you have, transcripts, resume, graduation certificates, any kind of employment documentation that you feel that you need to keep, you might want to have those digitized as well. So in the last presentation, we talked about when you create your files that you would want to make sure that you have a file for, of course, your vehicle and then your medical. Cool. Um, taking it a bit step further, if you have a file for your vehicle, which you have your paper file, you can also consider um, as you, you know, create and organize your, your files for your vehicles, think about, um, in addition to loan contracts and documents, having a file for your repairs and your maintenance. Think about having maybe a journal, a notebook, so that every time you had to take your car in for repairs and maintenance that you kept track of all of your transactions with date, um, what uh, work was performed, this is going to help you to stay on top of your vehicle as far as the maintenance and it prevents and can, um, it makes you a, an informed consumer so that when you take your car in for repairs, you can have your notebook and know what repairs have already been made so that people don't upsell you on unnecessary work. You might also want to consider just creating a car fund. Create a car fund, not just for your repairs and for those maintenance that you're going to have, but for your registration, your tax. Um, allocate through direct deposit a certain dollar amount. And what this does is it will help to stabilize your spending plan, your budget, because you're going to be contributing to that every month throughout the year. So there's money sitting in an account so that when those items come up, that you can take care of them without using your credit card. And as far as your medical, um, when you have your paper files, also consider maybe having a medical journal so that every doctor, dental visit, eye 
um, doctor visit that you have, you are documenting, you have dates, you have times, you have uh, procedures that were performed, you have next steps, you have a list of all of your medication, you've got any allergies listed there. It's really good to have that piece of document so that when you go to your visits, you take it with you and then you can write down any notes that you need to um, keep on file. Because if you don't, what happens when you leave is we forget. We forget what the doctor said. We forget about the follow-up. So documentation is important and it keeps you in the driver's seat of your finances with your medical and also your vehicles. You're going to be an informed consumer. So records to keep for one year or less. These are general guidelines, of course, um, bank, credit union statements, utility bills, your auto and your homeowner's insurance policies. Every time you get you know, a new policy, you want to discard the previous. That helps to kind of keep your files lean and clean, right? You don't have all those documents just piling up. And of course, anything that is tax related, so if you're using your credit card statements and you know that there's some items on there that you're going to possibly need, if you ever get audited, make sure to keep that statement. Documents to keep for more than one year, any kind of tax returns and their supporting documentation, property contracts, appraisals, annual retirement, investment funds, receipts for any major purchases for your home and your any type of repairs. Um, the IRS, they can go back actually and audit you um, for three to seven years. So you want to make sure to keep that in mind as you are filing and cleaning out your documents and um, making sure to keep your records. Documents to keep indefinitely, birth and death certificates, marriage certificates, adoption records, citizenship, anything do with um, social security. Again, these are general guidelines. There may be some others that we have not listed that are applicable to you. On the previous slide, we talked about, you know, the timelines for these documents. However, be sure that um, consider that Consider your documents and your current situations as you are going through and making those determinations on how long you should keep certain records. You might have to do some research. With all of this organizing, it is so easy to forget and not remember where you found some of your records. So a document locator is something that you might want to consider. It is a tool that's going to help you find items. It's a detailed list of where you stored your records. So you want to make sure to include personal information, you know, contacts for like attorneys, personal advisor, maybe your doctor information, um, online username with passwords, um, in addition to having that document locator, it is also a great idea to make sure that you have a family member or a very close friend who can access your documents, whether it is online or also um, a hard copy. Could someone in an emergency find your documents easily or are you the only one that knows where everything is located? So that is something to consider. Make sure to have someone else besides yourself that knows where the documents are. So death is a part of life. It is something that none of us want to talk about, but it is inevitable that because we're all going to die one day. So unfortunately, we might find ourselves having to deal with a situation where we have to make some decisions to settle a family member's accounts or estates. So um, it's a tough, it's a tough decision to have, but it's a necessary conversation to have with our loved ones while we can still talk. So if you have bank accounts, make sure that you have beneficiaries and payable on deaths on your financial accounts. You may also want to consider. Um, wills and revocable living trusts. And having a will and a revocable living trust, 
They are legal documents that determine who will manage your assets and how your assets will be distributed after your passing. Desert Financial Wealth Management Division provides right now because of COVID um, online Zoom webinars where they talk about all of these topics and share information about the benefits and the features. And they're there to answer your questions so that we can be informed consumers um, to make sure that our family members are not stressed and are prepared when we pass and they can take care of our wishes. They also have on their website um, a lot of blog posts and financial information and articles to help us to understand these topics a little bit better. All right, so I hope that the information that I've shared today has been helpful to you in some way to help you to organize your financial records or to take that first step to make sure that all of your bank accounts have beneficiaries and payable on death and to consider maybe having a will and revocable living trust so that your family members do not have to deal with the stress of having to figure out what to do when we pass. So thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye-bye.